Okay, so I just want to talk to you about something. Um, tell you a story and kind of illustrate something. So, in the first year or so of me being a Christian, I mean, I didn't get that God had done something pretty, pretty major in me distinct from a lot of other people. So I kind of was trying to come to terms with why I was having this almost like, um, you know, traumatic shock or something. And yet everyone else said, hey, hi, you know. <laughs> and I was kind of like, just, I couldn't, there was some people that God clearly put across my path in the church that I was in but they weren't able to meet with me on the level that I was experiencing things and they weren't able to sort of explain to me what was going on I mean I just kind of assume I, 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 you know <clears throat> there wasn't anybody alongside me there was no I never got discipled or anything like that nobody was helping me so I mean there was there was godly people that sometimes spent time with me, but there wasn't anybody that knew what they were talking about. It wasn't in the sense of what was happening with me. I didn't understand. So I think it was probably after about towards the second year or something. I can't remember, but I started to pray and I said, please bring me somebody, Lord, that I can relate to somebody that's a bit like me that I can kind of talk about, you know, get, that that wants to know what, you know, where I'm at in the sense of, and gets it. And I made this prayer. I just prayed, please just give me some one person that's like, you know, I can talk to, that's a friend sort of thing that, that gets um, me. And, <clears throat> what happened was that um, I was in the church one Sunday and I gave a word at the front um, um, about something. And this guy that I'd never seen before who had just turned up came up to me. He was about the same age as me. And he started talking to me because he seemed to think we had some kind of connection. And this turned out to be, in a set, the person I prayed for, really, because, so what happened, what, what, what was going on with this guy was that he was, let's call him, I'm gonna call him John, because it'll make it easier from the illustration. But John um, had been a Christian 15 years before, and it was he had a really really horrendous church church experience, and it essentially it it destroyed his marriage, and he plummeted into drink, drugs, everything. He backslid for about fifteen years, and he had just um, he didn't know what he was going to do. He'd, he'd come away from the Lord. He didn't really um, feel that that was he was ever going to come back. And basically, um, the Lord spoke to him and had said to him, I want you with my people. And that had just happened. So he was still an alcoholic and, and everything else, but God was doing this incredible work, like almost immediately in him. But this guy had, you know, definite, he'd picked up stuff over time. I mean, clearly he, he had terrible migraines, like they were chronic. He was getting them like, you know, Sometimes he wouldn't be able to come out of bed for a few days and stuff like that. And there was stuff going on, but um, I would I would spend every hour I could with this guy. Um, and he would he was he wanted the company. And at that time, I don't think you know, if I was working because my work's something sporadic. But I was like spending day after day after day with this guy, and I was kind of without realizing that I was I think I was kind of ministering to him. But in, res in return, I was kind of learning stuff. I mean, he was telling me stuff that 
it was all just making sense all of a sudden. Things about me. One of the main things I think that was um, important for him the initially was that he asked me my testimony and when I told him about the whole hell thing and that, that absolutely, that was like the first week or something I met him. He was completely convicted. He was crying, he was sniveling, he was in bits, he was begging God for forgiveness and all that. And I really believe that God was saying, okay, I've had the grace to bring you back, but I just want you to hear this so that you know you understand something. It was really, really powerful. But he was really prophetic and it, well, the word of knowledge. And I mean, you know, some people can have that kind of thing and you think, is that God or is it not God? But he was like, he would tell me things that, well, for a start, they were just so pinpoint accurate. I've never known anything like it. He would say things to me like, um, <laughs> he would basically say, he'd give me a word and then he'd say, I just to validate it, God just told me that he saw you today sniffing your armpit. And I'd been at work and I had, um, I had a sort of special meeting with my wife that day and I was so caught up and nervous about it that I just was nervously sniffing my, sniffing my armpit because I was doing this really heavy labour and I just kept thinking, I've got to get back and have a shower, I've got to get back and have a shower. So it was so, <laughs> it was ridiculous, but this is what he was like. But he, he, he would, he sort of opened up a kind of anointing on things I'd never seen before, like on scripture, like he would speak about things like, I am like a tree planted by the water and he'd say planted, planted, planted. And I just think, I, I just get an anointing off it, I get an unction coming off of it, you know, and we spent so much time together. I prayed a lot for this guy and but he wasn't, the church that I was in just wasn't pastoral and he wasn't getting the care that he needed. He needed sort of, you know, some kind of recovery or something like that. And they kind of fobbed him off almost on a different church, which kind of provided work for him and stuff like that. But I was still seeing him, I was still friends with him. Now this guy was very, very like, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd from going right back to when he first was a Christian, he, he'd had like visions of the end times and all this kind of stuff. He was very much about that. But there was a lot going on, and you know, the drugs had taken their toll on his mind in some ways. And, you know, um, I think sometimes he was a bit off, and but other times he was just, you know, but it was powerful. And <clears throat> it wound up actually, cul it culminated in two things. One thing was that his, um, we'd been praying for his mum um, to be saved, like you do for your family members. And then she just spontaneously just, declared that she didn't want to go help, go to hell and she didn't want to be a Christian. So that was great. That happened near the end of this story. And the second thing that happened was that um, um, <clears throat> I'd done like probably my first deliverance on somebody with him. I was praying for different things because he had these problems and all that. And then we had this day in a church library and God really used me to deliver him of something. And I got definite confirmation about it because I, he, he, you know, I thought of something and then he sort of, he told me something that I, what he'd seen in his mind and I saw a scripture. It was just one of those things, you know, it was just like bang, 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 bang. So it was a really powerful um, deliverance that happened in a certain area of his life. So the point is that I was really close to this person. I mean, there was a point, I just, I'm not trying to embarrass him, but there was a point that he actually, we had this argument and then he, he he fell against my chest and said, I thank God. He was crying. He said, I thank God for you. I just, I thank God for you. So, I mean, we were close, you know what I mean, over a short period of time. And he really just, you know, we used to meet up and I'd say, and I'd say, what have you got? What have you got? And he'd have like, you know, oh, I've got here. And I just felt God do this and da 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 da. And, I'd, and it was just, we were always on that plane. It was just really a lot of, a lot of fun. And it was really, it really brought me into um, a deeper, thing with things of God. So this day he just, he, 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 he turns up at my house on a Saturday and he sits down and goes, right, he says, um, um, there's lots of things coming up now. He says, um, lots of things ahead of us. He says, I won't be able to see you anymore. I went, what, sorry? He went, I won't be able to see you anymore. I, I, I am, I'm moving on now. 
I won't be able to speak to you. I won't be able to see you anymore. I says, well, permanently. And he went, I went, until, so, he went, he went, I says, when, so, what, <laughs> so when will you be able to see me? And he went, R revival, revival. And it just didn't ring with me. And um, that didn't. And then he went, so I won't be able to speak to you. I says, so what's brought this on? That's just what the Lord, that's what we've got to do. And it was just the most weird thing. And then so he, he went off. He, that was it. He cut me off, he blocked his phone. It was just, that was it. And like, um, I thought, I don't know what to make of it. I thought, what? Um, I bumped into him once or twice in the street and he was like, no, I can't speak. No. And it was like angry. It was like angry. Like, um, you don't don't try and speak to me now. Don't try and speak to me. It was like he didn't want to know. And I was kind of like going, what? It it messed me up because it wasn't so much like I was kind of like, and you know, I was man enough to not kind of like be totally desperately trying to get him back or something. But I was at the same time going. What have I done? What's what's happened here? There was no explanation. I mean, there was literally no explanation. We were like great buddies, and then it was like it was just no explanation. And um, so, what happened after a while is that I started to kind of because I was missing it. You know, I was missing that kind of part of my life. But then I kind of thought and realised that God is never going to put somebody, he's always going to make sure that you're, that there's nothing that starts to take up his space. Do you know what I mean? He's always going to make, he maybe gave me it for a bit, but the point is that he has to get me back to him. Like it wasn't, I had to try and stand, you know, I was kind of dependent on that person to an extent because they were kind of bringing me into God's presence, they were bringing me into sort of things. And I started to real even just as an as, even just as an a, a, not even as an inspired thing. It was just obvious to me. I thought God's always God's always going to prefer if I tr if I'm kind of relaxed, dependent on Him, and I don't have that crutch in a sense. Not not that it's not that I think it was even necessarily the right thing, but I think that next because because I, I did start to come into my own after after some time, and. <clears throat> Um, there's there's a scripture here that um, I think is relevant to it. Um, he was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works I am doing, bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. So, you know, he was a great and burning light. But the testimony that Christ has is greater than that of John. See what I'm saying? So Christ wants me back looking at him. And at some point, he doesn't want anything to stand between that. Now, that was several years ago. I uh, just like going on with the Lord's and saying different things. But <clears throat> the other day, it was a very interesting day, was that I, I woke up and I was in prayer. And I, I've not heard God speak to me for quite a while. <laughs> I mean, I was getting a little bit anxious. And um, I heard him say, you're going to speak to John today. And I was like, did I hear that? So why I know it was from God, apart from anything else, is that it was a very interesting because my other son, the son that is not saved, I was speaking to him. Uh, I went a walk with him and I was speaking to him and he, who is normally totally averse to things to do with um, anything to do with what I believe, he just wants, doesn't want to know, he asked me something and it easily led into stuff about the mark of the beast and the end times and, you know, ten kingdom, confederacy and the all that stuff. I was, I, you know, and he was really listening and, it's a, and it was the first major witness I'd got to him about anything biblical. So I'd walked about a mile with them, and I just walked back, and he was just about to go his own way. 
exactly a certain junction. And he's, and just as I finished what I was telling him, which was all nice and neatly wrapped up, so that same day that I'd heard the voice, I looked, and just ahead of me, while my son went that way, was John. <laughs> and I went, I went after, I went, John, and he went, no, no, I can't speak, he's doing the same thing, same thing, kind of like, you know, I, no, 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 no. But then I started, and then I says, look, I've been told that I'm going to speak to you today, so I'm going to speak to you. And um, he went, he went, um, and then he, he kind of calmed down, and I said, come on, man, what's the problem? I said, what's, no, no, I've t I was a different person back then. I was very unwell, I was very unwell. And, um, and then he said to me that his elders, like his new elders when he went and moved church back then, you know, they are the ones that, he says, they told him, I come under their authority, they told me I can't speak to you anymore, I'm not allowed to speak to you, well, I'd never met them or anything, but, oh, okay, okay. But I said, well, I says, I mean, what about all this? I mean, you know, lockdown and all that kind of stuff. I went, you know, I says, it's the, it's the end of the world, isn't it? And he went, he went, oh, don't give me all that, because he was really into that stuff, he went, he went, it's just an epidemic. I says, all oh, right, okay. And I was kind of trying to be calm with him because he was pretty hostile, to be honest. <laughs> and I went, I went, so um, you still believe God's put a call on your life? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I, and his, and, um, I said, because um, I said, God, you know, God told me that we were going to meet. And he went, I says, so I mean, he went, oh, yeah, oh, have you got a phone then? A hotline, a hotline, a hotline, which I thought was really ironic because it was really him that used to, hear all the time. I didn't really hear much at all. And um, uh, he clearly had, was, you know, had gone, I don't believe in the end times anymore. I, I'm not really into the gifts. But at the same time, it, it kind of was like it closed the door. It was, it was quite, it ended up quite kind of friendly. We just chatted. It put a lot of things to bed. But, you know, it sorted out. And I thought, well, I'm just glad I'm where I'm at and what I believe. It's not really, it's his, he's on his journey, whatever that is. But the point is that, you know, the word says, he must increase, I must decrease, you know? And like, um, God's not gonna let anybody else, you know, take away from himself or, you know, he's not gonna like make somebody the sole kind of focus of your salvation other than him. And if anyone becomes that, you become dependent on him that way, he will take them away. He will take them away because you're in idolatry. That's the way it is. That's the way it was with me. I mean, I wasn't, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't like that. It wasn't so like that, but it still, it made sense to me. It didn't make sense, but it, then it does make sense. He was a burning and a shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John.